Now we're going to pivot just a little bit. Uh, shout out to the Pivot Podcast. Hey. So, um, Brother Daniel, now, do you think there's an unfixable gap between the expectations of men and women, 2023. Is there an unfixable gap between the expectations of men and women? Ooh, so when we talk about expectations between men and women, what exactly are we, are we talking about in relationships? Are we talking about, Tommy, stop looking at me like that. <laughs> I'm about to say, how, however you want to interpret it. I left it vague on purpose. I left it vague on purpose, however you want to interpret it, brother. Um, mm. expectations are a funny thing. Um, I think it's good to have expectations, right? Because it gives you something to strive for. But I guess the right word there isn't necessarily expectations. It should be goals, right? Um, and as long as you have goals, you're always striving for something, even if you don't necessarily achieve them. Um, there is a lesson learned in failure. Um, but when it comes to, I think sometimes unfair expectations may be set, um, in certain arenas. Um, but it's also, I, there's a, there's an accountability factor in there as well. It's like, if you as a man or woman know that you cannot meet the expectations set um, upon or desired by another individual, then you have to take accountability and communicate that um, and figure out which way you're going to go. Um, mm. Yeah, I'm going to leave that there. Cause okay. <laughs> I was hoping he's going to continue so I had more time to think. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, Tag, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, unfixable gap between expectations in 2023 between men and women. Um, I think there's, I think just like certain things are really hard to combat that this, uh, quote unquote expectations that us men have, um, I don't think, I think it's hard to combat. It's just like, Ooh, ooh damn. No, I don't think it's fixable. I think it's unfixable. Okay. I'm saying that right there. Okay. I gotta pick a side. Um, I definitely think it's unfixable because um, though the world is changing and there's so many options on what you can be and how identify and what is what nowadays, I think that the people who are still on a binary track are still cons like still thinking that men are supposed to be providers one way. Um, and you know, do this, this, and that, and fix things. And it may not be just as simplistic as that binary thought process, but it, there's ideologies embedded in that where the men are the fixers, the providers, and they don't get the support that their their partners will get to be inclusive. Their partners will get. Um, and I think that as, as men grow up too, it's that same ideology. Like it's who else is around you. Machismo is a real thing. I'm an Afro Latino, so machismo. You, you gotta be a big man all the time. So like, I don't like fighting, but I stand like, I got it ready. Like you want it. Like what mm -hmm. my, my boss says, stay ready so you don't gotta get ready. Mm -hmm. So I stay ready so I don't gotta get ready, but I hate fighting, right? Um, but it's the idea of how I grew up. My dad was a fighter. So he, I remember one time he said, if the homie comes up, you gotta swing him on the bat when I'm fighting. And I'll never forget that because I didn't wanna do it and I didn't have to do it luckily, but it's that mentality that mm -hmm. some, young people grow up with, with the people that are their role models. Mm. And even like with my mom, like, it's like, okay, she taught me like, as a man, you got to walk on the opposite side of this, or no, on the, the side or the street side. And she has to walk on the inside. It's like cultural mm. things. So like, I learned good things to when I'm engaging with women in certain aspects from my mother, but I also learned bad attributes from my dad on how to be a man. So I think that those expectations are always going to be there and they're unfixable just because that's the way the world is right now. Appreciate that. Mm. For, for me, I think the gap, it, I, I, I disagree, but I think it can be fixable. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, <laughs> but I think that uh, the other piece is, is that where you begin working on the gap. Mm -hmm. You know, I think a lot of times we want to jump in the middle of the bridge and start working in the middle of the bridge and nothing to hold on to. And, and uh, I, I do a lot of work with couples. And, and one of the things that I see is that so often you come to the table and we want to be together, we're going to hook up, whatever but I don't know who I am. Mm. 
which mm. that, it goes back to that mental health. I don't even know who I am. So just the odds of me choosing the right person, and I don't even know who I am, mm. the odds of me doing that is slim and none. Mm. All right? and, and so I think that the, to fix that gap, it's almost kind of we have to peel back to the place where uh, I'm just going to talk about the brothers for right now. I ain't going to talk about the sisters. But <laughs> the, the, the brothers, we just need to realize, step back and find out who we are, uh, what we are, what we believe in, where's our mindset. Uh, when we understand who I am, then mm -hmm. I know what I need. And so, therefore, I see a sister, and as a sister, I see, okay, that sister has what I need to make be whole, and I can bring something to the table for her life also. And I think so often what we do, we miss, is figuring out who we are. And most of us don't figure out who we are until after we done made that selection. And then after we made the selection, we spend the next 10 years trying, spinning around in that selection, triggering we're going to get in or get out, and, and that starts a whole new sense of mental illness. Mm. Appreciate that. Mm. Yeah, that was, yeah, you was talking to me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <word>. <laughs> okay. You got to run it back for me. I'm a little slow today. No, it's um, all good. It's all good, <laughs> the, brother. The, the, um, so is there an unfixable gap between men and women in, in 2023? So, so after listening to uh, Devon and PT and Daniel, I'm going to say yes in my perspective. Okay. No, no, no. There's, there's not an unfixable gap. That, okay. That's the way I want to answer okay. it. Uh, and the reason why I say that is because I think that there are a lot of things related to men and narrative around, like, j just the generalization of men that won't ever go away, right? And, and, and piggybacking off of um, the word provider that Devon used, I think that that provider, the, the, the head of the household, um, you know, not head of the household, but but, but, the, but the man is ahead, whatever, right? We, get, we can look at whether biblical or not biblical. And, and I, I say that, and, and regardless of whether or not people um, would say he's the, he's the man of the house or he's the, head, he's the head of the house, at the end of the day, I think that somebody is always going to be to blame, right? Like, so with the, whether things are going good or whether things are going bad, somebody is always going to be to blame. And it could be whether he's there in the household or not in the household. Um, I think that... A lot of times men are demonized um, because of the larger like statistics and stuff. So you look at victimization and, and criminalization, whatever. A lot of times those things are perpetuated by men. And I'm not trying to justify the stuff that we do just, just as, as, a, as a man. But I think because of those stats that we're just looked at in a certain way. And don't talk about a black man because then it's e even more so. right? We don't got to do nothing to be looked at as a threat. Right. And so I think that we look at gaps and expectations. It's like when they, when when it's when it's time for, you know, somebody to, to, to take responsibility for something we just say is bad, whatever, or negative, that we're looking at what, what did he do? Right. <laughs> um, I think very, very seldom are we are we looking at women necessarily in terms of being a person who messed up or whatever. I think there's a lot more grace for our women than it is for our men. Um, and yeah, so, so that's why I say what I say around the expectation and gap, just, just around that whole responsibility piece and, and, and societal norms. Appreciate that. All right. Oh, man. I've been waiting for this one, man. <laughs> um, so, uh, one, again, I want to say that uh, I serve a big God. So, the yes, it is fixable, period, point blank. And wherever you stand at, agnostic, if you believe in the universe, whatever the case is, there is so much abundance and life and love that is just uh, outside of our view. It can, and I believe will be fixed. Um, oh my goodness, it's so much. Uh, adults don't know how to heal. Mm. Hurt people. Hurt adults people. don't know how to heal. One thing that I love about working with youth and even remembering as a youth is we could fight at Delaware Park and then we would come back and be cool and we will, we will pick each other on the same uh. squad. Adults do not do that. Um, there is a, uh, what did I put? It's like, it's interesting. Um, when we think about youth and we think, if we think about uh, young people like a new computer, uh, they're not filled up. They don't have all these tabs open, all these windows open. They haven't been used for years. They haven't needed mm. to be rebooted, rebooted or things like that. But when we become adults, we are 
handling all of that. And a lot of times I feel when we look at these issues, we're not thinking about uh, that gap. You know what I'm saying? And I'm thinking about relationship wise, where, where can we get together relationship wise that the other pressures that are on me are affecting that I can't show up even if I wanted to know myself. I can't even show up as my full self because all of this stuff is on me. And a lot of times in our community, in the black community, the family is broken. So I haven't had an example. I haven't had a way to navigate, to do these things. You know what I'm saying? So uh, there's so much in it. And again, it's a very uh, American thing to look at the uh, the celebrity, to look at what is sexy, to look at the easy answers, to go with the narratives. And then it's like, oh, well, all, all men are this and all men are that. And um, that, when you said narrative, before you said narrative, I wrote down, uh, I believe when uh, Daniel was talking, I was like, the, uh, what are some of the false things that we, that we hear about that we know about? When they say like, uh, black men aren't good fathers, one, statistically, we're the best. Amen. Period. When they go and look at this, like it is documented. This is not even, you know what I'm saying? You can go and Google it and you can see statistically we show the most love that even when white people spend more time with their kids, it's not quality time. It's not building that relationship. And because we are so cognizant, because we have so much, and sometimes because that kid is the only person that will love us, we will sit there and make sure they get the Jordans. But we're doing more than just the Jordans. We are building a bond with them. Like, yo, we, we matching Jordans. Like, you got my fly. You have that. You know what I'm saying? Like, we're building something more than that. So those narratives are so strong and so persuasive and are in our media and are in our movies and are in all of those things that, like the information that we have today, that are, is at our t fingertips, that is in our phones, that we are overwhelmed, that it's hard for us to take a step back and be like, we can uh, do this. Um, so how do we heal? Then it's like real conversations. How many of us men really take time to have conversations with other black men that may not necessarily be like us? So I went to City Honors, but I also played football. So I had the privilege of being with the dorks and accept it, but also I was sweet at football and it was undeniable. You know what I'm saying? And also I had these hands. <laughs> so I'm going to talk about Goku and Pokemon, and then I'm going to whoop you, and then you got, you got beat by a City Honors dude. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So having that, yeah. but because I understand that that experience is uh, not shared by everyone, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. now we go into there's, there's a lot of different nuances. So I try my hardest not to, and I was just having a conversation with my friend, I try not to throw these blanket statements. Because if you did play sports, one, if you play sports, there's uh, uh, experience that you've had with women that if you don't play sports, you don't understand. Let alone if you are good. <laughs> when I went to UB, I played for UB, it was thrown at me, you know what I'm saying? Now, when I go the other way, when I go into my friends that uh, from City Honors and we were doing hacky sack and we were going out to countries and climbing trees and jumping in ponds or whatnot, some of them did not touch a girl, smell a girl, think about a girl until they got into their 20s. Mm. And so the experience to even be like, they're all the same and now let alone let you be black and now you're a black nerd or you're an Oreo or you're dealing with all of these different things. And then you get into this, you try to get into a, a relationship and have this talk. It's like the, the expectation is so much wider. The, the, um, the gap is so much bigger because the experience is different. And if you do not come from that experience, if you don't come correct or whatever the case is, you know what I'm saying, then people can diss you, people can hurt you, and then hurt people start to hurt people. Yeah. So it's like, how do we start to... When we have this conversation, how can we have this conversation with a, uh, a level of, of nuance, mm -hmm. a level of humility that my experience is not the only experience, mm -hmm. and that uh, if I've, especially if I've had kind of the same experience over and over and over, then I may be the common denominator. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. One thing that I like about being a guy is like we had to be hunters, right? You got to be hunters and you got to switch up how you do these things. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I am passionate about saving the world. I am not passionate about Jordans. Um, I am not. I love my sports, but I'm not super passionate about that. So I had to figure out what was the way that I can get numbers, right? Now, for me, it was being quiet. I'll just take my phone out. They put a number in. I was like, okay, we can do that. My cousin Mike, he's funny. Gift the gab. 
funny gets them all the time. You know what I'm saying? But I had that experience. Now, that's me hunting and looking and like, okay, how do I change? I can experiment. When I get rejected, I can handle the rejection because I've had so much. Now you go with somebody that had no rejection and when they get into it or they get into their first love or their first heart and they'd be like, they were so good. They, they've never hit nobody or whatnot. But that was their 20 years. They've waited. They've dreamed. They've put their whole heart into this and then somebody ripped it and then they <laughs> went berserk. They didn't know they had that inside of them. You know what I'm saying? So people are given these experiences and really they are so dynamic and so different and like for athletes being at UB one thing that uh that we experience is one women will hunt us they know our mm. they know our stats they know what our favorite food is uh they know our moms or whatnot they like oh you might go to the NBA yo Green Bay is looking at you you know what I'm saying so it's like now we come you get into this thing and then like you're kind of scared like yo like let me fall back or I don't want to go out so much or I can't because if something happened, news is ready and then my life could be ended. So it's like all of these experiences are so different. But when we get into it, we kind of get triggered. And this will be my last thing. I'm sorry that I'm speaking long. This will be my last thing. We kind of get triggered. And when we start to give these defenses, I think what is very hard for adults across the board, we tie our identity to our arguments. And we get personally offended when somebody doesn't agree or think with us like, what do you mean? No, we don't do all this. Like, hold on. No, some people are terrible. They do do that. They do do that. And it's like, how can you, um, how can you separate that so you can have the conversation where you don't get the up, uh, the emotions and get all of that. And it'd be like, oh man, I can start to see. And it's like, a lot of times with anything, like traveling, if you go and travel and you get in different countries and cultures and you see different things, it's like, it opens up your eyes like, oh, we don't have disrespect. You stepped on my shoes. Disrespect. You go, you go to China, and there's billions of people. You yeah. and McDonald's, and there's no lines. It's like a group that's just shifting up. Okay. People stepping on your shoes. Nobody's getting mad and trying to kill somebody over their shoes. Different culture. A different thing. My man, thank you for cutting me yep, off. Yep, yep. No, it's all good. Because <laughs> I want to I wanna get to like the solution part. So y 